the inauguration night, you gave your speech, right. you go to the balls, you come back, and you're in the White House in the residence with Melania. Right. And by the way, that's uh, Marine One right there. That is right. And so my question is, what do you say? What do you, what are you thinking? Well, it was a beautiful evening. It was an incredible day. People liked the speech, which was good. Yeah. Uh, it just somewhat of a surreal experience, to be honest with you. I'm sure. But I don't have too much time to think about it because there's so many things to do, so many problems to solve. You know, we're a, that's not we're bad. A what a beautiful helicopter. That's yeah, beautiful. We're a country that has some difficulty, to put it mildly, some very difficult situations. But I, we'll get them straightened out. I have known you for years. And on a personal level, whenever I've ever talked to you, it's either 11 p.m., 12 midnight, 1 a.m., or 5 or 6 a.m. You're a workaholic. Well, I like working. I don't think I'm a workaholic. I, I just like what I'm doing. I don't go too much with the vacations because I'm bored. <laughs> you get bored on vacation? And the good thing about this, I have plenty to do. You yeah, know, so you're busy plenty now. To do. So the ultimate, I would say. Hard on your family. I, for example, I met your son, right. your 10 year old. What a wonderful, smart, charming kid. And then they attack him. That, that's got to hurt well, you. Well, Saturday Lyon. Night Live, a person from Saturday Night Live was terrible. It's a failing show. It's not funny. Alec Baldwin's a disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, he's terrible on the show. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I don't mind some humor, but terrible. But for them to attack, for NBC to attack my 10-year-old son is wow. a disgrace. And, and he's a great kid. And he's I a great him. boy. Yeah. And it's, it's not an easy thing yeah. for him. Um, Believe me. You, I know you talked a little bit about this, the nuclear codes. How long was that meeting? How in-depth is it? Well, I, I don't go into you? it. I can tell you, though, that's serious stuff. Yeah. And when you see the kind of destruction that's explained to you, you realize that getting along with people is a very good thing. And that's what, that's what you said about Putin. If we can get along, we'll get along. Right. If I, I don't know Putin. But if we can get along with Russia, that's a great thing. It's good for Russia. It's good for us. We go out together and knock the hell out of ISIS because that's a real sickness. You know, the whole ISIS thing is a real sickness. And, but if we get along with Russia and other countries, not just, we should get along with everybody if we can. Now, it's in some cases, harder. you won't be able to, but right. we got to try. If in many cases, it's going to be harder with, I've always said there's a clash of culture or civilizations, um, you know, countries that practice Sharia. By the way, we're in the Oval Office. This is the Oval Office. It's a great statue of That's Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. By the way, just by the, way the, 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 bust, Luther, the bust. The bust of Martin Luther King, which was falsely reported, falsely reported that it was taken out of the office. When I arrived, it was immediately taken out. These are lying people. These are bad people. And Martin Luther King is here, will always be here. And the apology was this. Yeah. Did, did you pick and every look who was above. here? Look, Alexander, Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton, Thomas, Jeff. You got a shot of these. I Ham did. You picked every I moved. I moved, uh, I moved paintings around the White House. I just thought it would be great. So we have George Washington. Honest Abe Lincoln. Mm -hmm. You have Andrew Jackson, who they say was the most like my campaign because his was a vicious campaign. It was a pretty rough campaign. We have a book on Adams and Jefferson. That was the most vicious campaign in the history of our country until this campaign. When you, when you first walk in this office every day and you think of it, it's great. Just take a look. And look at my desk. Papers. You don't see presidents with I got a, one question about the desk, because, and you have Ivanka and Jared have young kids. Are we going to see one of the young kids maybe crawl through there? Could like be. I think it's a good Kennedy idea Jr. before they get too old. Yeah. But that was John John. That's a secret right. door. Yeah. In that desk, and that was a famous picture. Why did you pick that desk? Well, it was Ronald Reagan. It was uh, a lot of great presidents, actually. FDR. Roosevelt. It was, it was, uh, we've had a lot of great presidents using this desk, and I thought that would be the appropriate desk. You know, when I came here, you have a right to use your desk and this, and you can pick, they have like seven desks. You were very impressed with your phones, too. What well, is, I have great phones. I have, I have yeah. phones that, let me tell you, the technology mm. that we have in this country is incredible. 
Unfortunately, perhaps we don't use it, but well, we need to. It is great, and the yeah. experts that do this work, we have really brilliant people doing it. Um, I assume you're going to be putting. There's a picture of your father. Picture that you of just my added. father, right? That wasn't there yesterday. Right. No, it wasn't. I just added that. That's yeah. good. You know that, huh? I didn't notice well, that. you picked that up fast. And I really, why did you choose the rug of Reagan? You could have also designed your own. Yeah, and others, but yeah. I thought that it. First of all, I liked it. I liked the look. I liked the lightness. And I like having it be Reagan. I like Reagan. I disagreed with him on some things, primarily trade. trade yeah. He was not as strong on trade as I felt he should have been, but that's okay. But he represented us very well. In your lifetime, who was the president that maybe you admired the most? Well, I liked Reagan. I didn't like him on trade. But other than trade, I liked him very much. No. And he was okay on trade, mm -hmm. but not great. I was surprised. My last question for you. I was surprised last night. I was watching your interview, and you were holding up the letter that... Barack Obama had let you uh, had left you. Right, seemed Beautiful like letter. a length, lengthy letter. It was, and you seemed to have a personal rapport with him. And you were right. This was a really, really incredibly vicious campaign. What amazed me is that I was vicious to him in statements. He was vicious to me in statements. And here we are getting along. We're riding up Pennsylvania Avenue, talking. We don't even mention it. I guess that's the world of politics. Mm. But I was tough on him, he was tough on me. And I like him, he likes me. I think he likes me. I mean, you're going to have to ask him, but I think he likes he me. He doesn't talk to me. Not too much. <laughs> Not too <laughs> no, much. he doesn't talk to me. I can't all. figure out why. Yeah. But um, look, you know, he wrote me a very nice letter, beautiful letter. Yeah. Helpful to you? It's something to think about. Yeah. I agree with what, it, the letter he wrote. My I mean, very, I very last question. Yes. Has this whole experience changed you in ways, in any way that you can think of? I don't think I've had the time to be changed because I'm cutting the prices of airplanes. I'm cutting the prices of army tanks. You're working. I'm cutting the prices of submarines. You know, we're lacking submarines and we're going to build new submarines, but the price is too high. So I'm cutting the prices way down. Um, doing a lot of work. Mr. In addition to getting Ford, General Motors, and some others to let's Mr. start building cars here, right? Mr. President, good Thank to you. see you. Thank, Thank you for you your time. Much. You've been very generous. Thank you Thank very you. much.